I was one of the first learning concierges with the Open SUNY um, plan. I worked with Alex on the NGLC grant as you know one of the initial concierge model positions. So the word concierge means just having an understanding of how to direct students in, t in an academic environment to the services they need or the place to get their questions answered. As a concierge, I think it's very important to have that point person. Um, the students, the online population is, is a diverse group, but many, many of them are um, busy, multitaskers, parents, non-traditional students. So once they realize that I exist, um, they use me quite frequently for everything. And if I can't provide that information, I direct them. It can be just administrative stuff like, you know, where do I send my certificate of residency? Um, to things like I'm having trouble with this faculty member or I don't understand how things work in this course. I hear all kinds of things um, and sometimes students do just call me with you know personal crises um, and they don't know what to do in terms of their online courses and, and I have had to step in and contact instructors on the behalf of students. It's very important for students to understand the learning management system. Um, it was previously Angel and is now Blackboard in our environment and um, we have courses, um, not courses, like little workshops actually where uh, I teach them about that. Um, I do it one-on-one, -on -one, virtually, sometimes it's just on the phone. Um, I have offered group sessions to just go through that, like through Collaborate and Blackboard. Um, but I, I find that I do the most tutoring, learning management tutoring, one-on-one, uh, -on -one, you know, in, in an as-need situation really. When a student comes to me frustrated with a particular course design, um, the first thing I do is, is look at it myself. To, uh, and then um, if, if I can, if we have the time, I will work with that student to show them what I see is expected of them, how they can find information, and how to work with it. Um, on the other end, I will also work with you know, my colleagues to kind of work with that instructor to, to change, make some changes in the course that would be more friendly. The life cycle of a semester is interesting. Um, it is different, um, and there are busier times and less busy times. There are times when I'm reactive and times when I'm proactive. Uh, the beginning, actually before each semester, I'm an academic advisor, so I'm advising in the summer new college students, new freshmen, incoming freshmen who intend to be online. So I do that um, and kind of prepare online students for the semester. That's when I do the uh, trainings. And, and just you know, keep in touch with students, online, new online students, to know what's coming. Um, once the semester begins, I'm more in the putting out fire mode, um, helping students just understand things or switch courses, drop courses, find new courses, all kinds of things like that. Um, as we get to, get to the middle of the semester, I become more proactive and I start using different reporting options to figure out who needs my attention, who can I contact to give a nudge to or, or get, you know, I see someone who hasn't logged in in a while, how can I get them back in their course? And sometimes just making that contact, whether it's an email or a phone call, is enough. They're like, oh, somebody is out there, you know, kind of watching over me and they get back in their course or they drop and I help them facilitate that sometimes, unfortunately. Towards the end of the semester, we're back in the advising mode again. Um, so, and also the students who are just kind of in a panic mode, needing tutor tutoring options, uh, that kind of help as well. I communicate in a few different ways with students uh, throughout the semester. Uh, we have an online student group within Blackboard, so I can just put an announcement, which automatically goes um, as an email to students. Sometimes I just email them, um, but it's usually that way. Um, I wish I could text them because then I know they'd read it. <laughs> but right now, uh, email is the main way I do, I do that. Um, I do a lot of phone work individually with students, though. I'm on the phone a lot. Not all schools use academic advisors um, for the concierge position. I don't think that's absolutely necessary since there's advising um, services available in other ways. Uh, so that would, that's a nice piece to have, but not necessary. Um, an understanding of the administrative uh, piece of the, the whole pie is very important. Uh, we have a one-stop area, which um, I actually had my office in that area for a long time when I first started the position, and I worked closely with the one-stop, and I, I learned a lot about financial aid and ad advising then, um, you know, everything you know, um, administrative. So I do a lot of that, and uh, students do not need to contact the one-stop because I can do that. Um, 
it helps to have been an online instructor or an online student. You know, I got my master's degree in, in a low residency program, so I know how to do online work as well as, you know, instruct it. Um, and also someone who just really genuinely um, loves students and cares about each student individually. I mean, I think that genuine concern and passion for student success is probably the most important piece. I love my position. I feel that I'm successful, you know, every day when I've made a difference to one student. And uh, online students feel disconnected at times from the institution. And I feel like my presence there helps them feel more connected and part of the college. It's my, my goal is to pull them in and feel like a part of the community.